uh, it's Steve Just, and we didn't plan it this way. We ended up we're ushering, lecturing, and accolading, so it's kind of the Just Family Revival Hour today. <laughs> but fortunately, you all get to sing now, so we will not be doing any of that. We'll sing along, but we ain't leaving. Um, we're blessed to have the Woodwind Quartet with us today uh, for special music. And I was asked to do a poll to see who's interested in starting coffee hour up again. Um, should be a rhetorical question in the Lutheran Church, but if you want to raise your hands, if you'd like coffee hour again. Okay. Um, keep in mind, we then need to have people to serve coffee hour again, so that, that's kind of that double-edged sword. All right. Alleluia, Christ is risen. <laughs> Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters, where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy, we bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our soul, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your light. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with light. To you be given all praise the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. We'll open with our first hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty Creator, ever-living God, we worship your glory eternal, three in one. And we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father and Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in the attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King of the Lord of the hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here here am I, send me. The psalm is Psalm 29, and please read along in the bold. Ascribe to the Lord your gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The The voice of the Lord makes the oak tree writhe and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. O Lords, give strength to your people. The second reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who, who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, of, and if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Please rise for the gospel affirmation.
Gospel is from book John, chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and it was born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and you, yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Gospel of the Lord. Have a seat. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. This may be the best known Bible verse, or at least John 3.16, whether or not people actually know what the verse says. And it's not exactly an original ver verse to do a sermon on, but I think today, this being Memorial Day weekend, it has a, a, a different relevance. And so we're going to draw some parallels to that today. So I'm calling my sermon worth dying for. A week ago, Pastor Dan asked if I would lead service. Obviously, I was a little bit apprehensive. I was honored. I've enjoyed uh, other members that have lead, led service in the past. Ward Voorhees has always done an excellent job, and I've appreciated insight and different experiences. I thought, okay, this isn't so bad. I can lead service. He said, Pastor Dan said that someone from Green River might be able to do the sermon. Good. Three days later, he emailed and said, no, they wouldn't be able to do that and asked if I could do the sermon. Well, okay. That moment, I thought, 47 years, 2,400 Sundays, I really should have paid attention better. <laughs> that next morning, or that same morning, the next email I re received was a daily devotional from Father Don Talley. It's amazing how some things happen at moments and you think they're divinely inspired. And after reading that devotional, I did feel relieved. I thought, here's some good stuff that I can steal. Father Don was a professor at St. John's. He's retired now at the age of 92. He taught comparative world religion. He's traveled the world. He has a photographic memory, at least for names and faces. I'd like to think I was special and that's why he remembers me, but now he remembers everybody. At St. John's, I was fortunate enough to meet many extraordinary people. Probably the best known is Coach John Gillardy. I played for him for two years. He's the winningest football coach of all time. He's a legend, certainly a unique character. He has a list of no's that we did not do in practice. And it was made famous because it was quite the opposite of what everybody else did. He's had books written about him, ESPN shows have been done about him, and he's in the Hall of Fame. Father Don has none of that, but I think he had a bigger impact on my life than John. Although I will say my freshman year, 
during practice, uh, Coach John, as he liked to call him, hated Gillardy, or Coach, he said that about 80% of Johnny's, St. John's guys, married Benny's, or College of St. Benedict's. I turned to my roommate and I said, yeah, that's not going to be me. Happy to say that my beautiful bride of 23 years next Sunday is a Benny from the class of 98. So maybe he did have an impact. But the devotional for that day from Father Don was from Book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 3. Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, a brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters our neighbors? The point was, how can anyone of importance come from here? I think we all kind of feel that. We expect significant people, people that do great things, come from other cities. That we're always surprised when they come from places like Lawrence. As Father Don pointed out, we look for heroes elsewhere. And I'll say, for those of you who have listened to me talk about church finances in the past, I, I'm not making this part up. He wrote, people send money to televangelists who make millions, but local pastors struggle and beg. Timing is impeccable, right? He went on to say, which pastor will, pastor will be the one that will visit you in the hospital? The one on TV or the one down the road? So that brings me back to what's worth dying for. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. What do we owe for that? I'm not a biblical scholar by any means, so I might be way off today and you might walk away saying, that was a waste of 10 minutes or an hour. But I like to keep things simple. What I do remember from those 2,400 Sundays, well, probably 2,000, or really 1,500, is that we are, one, to love the Lord with all our heart, with all of our soul, and with all our mind. And two, love your neighbor as yourself, in Matthew 22, verse 37. Seems pretty simple, right? So how can I talk for the next 45 minutes on something so simple? if you're paying attention. <laughs> so the next question is, how do we do that? It's always easy just to say the words, right? We all say that. But how do we actually do that? How do we love our neighbor? I'm sure there's many ways in which we can do this, but I would suggest that we look at how we take care of the gifts that God has given us. The question is, are we good stewards? Again, probably knew I'd get back to that eventually. Everything has been given to us. Let me repeat that. Everything has been given to us. And we are called to be caretakers. So while good deeds may not get us into heaven, they are or should be the expressions of our love for God. We don't do good to go to heaven. We do good because we are going to heaven. You know the song, They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love close to the singing as I'm going to do. Unfortunately, sometimes reality could be they'll know we're Christians by how judgmental we are. But I want to step back and recap some of the things that we've talked about from the Stewardship Committee over the past year. There were nine aspects that we visited. There were God's grace, the story, creation, time, talent, treasure, stuff, Reminds me, I need to have someone talk about stuff at the end. Justice, local and global communities. There's a lot there, but I think it pretty much touches on everything and every aspect of life. We look at those aspects, it pretty much encompasses everything. Stewardship is the integration of our faith and the way that we live our lives. According to Clarence Stoughton, who was the former president of Wittenberg University, it's an ELCA affiliated church in Ohio. I had to look that up. Stewardship is everything we do after we say, I believe. It's the way in which we use all of the resources that God has entrusted to our care so that we can love God and our neighbor. Again, pretty simple. So that brings us to Memorial Day and maybe to the harder question. What do we owe those 
that have died so that we may continue to live free and worship freely? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm given the sermon, so I get, I get to give my thoughts. I remember sitting at my cousin's kitchen table in the spring of 1991. It was my cousin, myself, and uh, another classmate, and the National Guard recruiter. I'm not sure what kind of batting percentage they hoped for, but he had one for three that night as uh, my classmate signed up and uh, is still enlisted and made a career out of it. Shortly before that, the Berlin Wall had fallen, Soviet Union had collapsed. Some said that joining the guards would be a good gig because we're not going to have any more wars after. And I understand where that sentiment was coming from, but I don't know if there was a dumber word ever said. Ultimately, I decided against joining. I really didn't want to get shot at. So I greatly appreciate those that signed up, or when their number was called, were willing to go. Interestingly enough, I visited with my classmate on Friday, and I said that to him, and he said he never even thought about getting shot at. So I'm not sure if this makes me better or less suited to answer that question, but I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in my sentence. So I may be way off the mark going forward, or I might be spot on. Let me know either way. So I know the standard for Memorial Day is to say thank you, and that we should take time to remember the sacrifices made. Certainly we should do that. Again, in preparation for this, I visited with several friends. My old classmate was one of them. It was pointed out Memorial Day is for the fallen, and Veterans Day is for the living. While we may not be able to thank those that have, we have lost, we can certainly thank their families that have been left behind. Ironically enough, that classmate of mine who was just driving back from uh, Ashley, North Dakota, visiting with a, uh, a gentleman who they had just received his remains from North Korea, they identified him from 12 inches of a leg bone, and they were able to uh, give some closure to that family. But this weekend, I'm asking that during your reflection and remembrance, you ask yourself what it is you think you owe them. What are we doing that makes this country worth dying for? I realize this is an open-ended political question, and you could open a can of worms, as happened on some of my visits. But I'm hoping we can stay away from some of that. While we may not get an answer, we may have a better understanding of each other. On the secular level, Certainly being an active, engaged citizen in the democratic process is one way that we can all live up to. And it's not a revelation to say that our society has become a me society. Life becomes about how do I or my family do better, rather than how do we as a community. Granted, this is probably human nature, but the idea of service to country is a powerful force, one that asks a person to put others before themselves service, and stewardship. Now, I'm always hesitant and want to clarify that I don't equate the loss of a life with me volunteering my time. It's not the same. But we each do what we are called to do. As was said in the classic 70s movie Grease, you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. It seems to me that the same way we express our love for God, which is through stewardship, is what makes this country great. This is what we owe those that have fallen and for all of our neighbors. Just like Father Don had said in his devotional, heroes can be from everywhere and can be anyone. Some are obvious and some are anonymous. The reasons for why we do what we do may differ, as each veteran that I visited with had different reasons for signing up. But in the end, the commitment was the same. The reason we are good stewards the reason why we love our neighbors as ourselves could differ from person to person, but at the heart of it, it's because we love our, our Lord has called us to it. The everyday heroes are those that quietly inspire us and shape us, oftentimes without us even knowing it. There are many here today that inspire me. One of them for almost 23 years. They shape our lives, and to me the greatest thank you is to live a life that carries on their legacy with a heart full of love for our neighbor and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in the end, with gratitude and graciousness, saying thank you may be all that can be said. Amen.
Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. If you're able, please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Um, and now we have our America the Beautiful by our wind, woodwind quartet. Please be seated. Thank you. Please join me in prayers. After the Lord in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord in your mercy. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for prairies and lakes, for rushing waters, the echoes of thunder, and for timely rains. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations and our leaders, that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine, so they may find peace, for India and all the world, find healing from COVID and all infectious diseases. 
Lord, in your mercy. We, pr we pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this worshiping community that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through your worship in our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in the faith. We pray for Chet Shetter, Mick Rose, Dolores Crow, those who gave all in service to their country and the families left behind. Let us never forget their service, sacrifice, and stewardship. Lord, in your mercy. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and deliver us from our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to share the peace with your neighbors in whatever fashion you you uh, deem fit, whether, I guess we can shake hands now, so if it's a fist bump, a peace sign, or what have you. All right, and we'll end with closing him at the name of Jesus.
an update on one of our stewardship projects. Earlier this spring, we did a clothing drive for some people called Polk County's Family in Need. And I got a thank you card I want to read to you from Jan Armerson. Thank you for your very special caring and generous devotion of much needed donations of much needed clothing and shoes. You have been a blessing to these families and they are grateful. Your beautiful children's clothing went very quickly and school counselors thank you. All of our families must be employed, therefore adult clothing is equally important. Our team serves as a big, sends a big thank you for helping and serving others in need. May our Lord bless each of you for supporting and embracing these struggling families. Our Lord has blessed us for year, 60 years by finding special people who want to help, see, help us share the love of Jesus. God bless Jan Arneson, director, Hope County's Families in Need. Thank you all for all you did. Thank you, Dick. Well, I apologize. This may be one of the shortest services, so <laughs> we we can visit some more out uh, outside, I guess. So you bet. Yes. Ms. Does anyone else have any uh, announcements? All right. Well, thank you for letting me be here today. Um, please join me in, in the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord somewhere else. <laughs>